one of the more fun series on the channel is my Hero Academia characters as mages. And it's been a little while since I've done anything on this series, but a few of you have been asking for me to do something else with it. So today, I'm going to do some more My Hero Academia characters as mages. Let's bring these illustrations to life. We've covered some of the students attending the Magical Academy, but despite all of the good and kind-hearted mages in this world, there are those who have fallen from the path of justice into the realms of darkness. One of those driven to madness is an underestimated but powerful mage if he could keep his personality in check. One of the reasons for him being driven to madness though is his magical ability, or rather, a forbidden spell he used on himself when he was younger. Being a member of a clan that specialises in duplication magic, mainly being able to create a complete and exact replica of any object the spell is cast upon. Once the spell is broken or the magic of the caster is worn out, the duplicate will disappear. For inanimate objects, this would result in no change to the original. However, it was forbidden to use this spell on a living creature, especially one that is sapient. The rule is for a very good reason, more than most will know. If the spell to create an exact duplicate in full, rather than an illusion spell, used on a living sentient creature it would at first seem to be fine and for a short period of time it is however the longer the spell is in effect or the more times the spell is used the personality of the caster will begin to fracture and shatter over time this will eventually become more apparent showing the unstable side of the personality that is descending into madness with each duplicate that is created the thing that makes the spell forbidden though despite the high price to pay to one's mental state is that each duplicate will be an exact copy. Abilities, memory, magical power. I mean, it's like having an identical twin that you're in sync with the whole time. If the spell was used on a mage who was in peak condition, the duplicates could also cast the same spell on themselves to make more of them. An almost endless supply of duplicates can be created this way. This would be great without the side effects on the caster's mental state. Although there is also another side effect to this spell, any damage done to the duplicate will increase the mental strain when the duplicate is killed or the spell is undone. This has caused many strong-willed members of the clan in the past to become unstable and fall into darkness. Our mage, Jin, has been using this spell constantly for many years and has since been exiled from the clan after his personality took a turn for the worse. After being banished by the clan, he started to go by the name twice and soon built up a reputation as the illusionist mage using his skills to steal items without anyone noticing before it was too late. And the duplicate of the item would vanish, leaving no trace at all. A bit of a Houdini, but a rather cool trick. However, it wasn't long before a dark organization caught wind of his abilities and recruited twice as the newest member of the group. They also encouraged him to use the forbidden spell on a regular basis. And over time, they did develop a method to help him improve his mental state, delaying the effects of the spell over time. By wearing a mask, Twice is able to keep his split personalities under control and even developed a single personality as long as the mask is on and intact. This is the first time that anyone using this forbidden spell has been able to regain any sense of self, let alone develop a personality to remain in control and continue to use the spell for an extended period of time. After several months of working for this organization, well, more a League of Dark Mages, Twice was introduced to some of the other elites after climbing up the ranks. One of the members was another mage who was slightly deranged with a rather unpredictable personality. A mage who specializes in the use of a rare and ancient form of magic, a form of magic known as blood magic. As mentioned before, there is a mage who specialises in the rare and ancient form of blood magic. Although there are clans that use this type of magic in the world, this mage uses one of the oldest and darkest forms. Being able to complete her tasks as well as suit her rather unhinged and unique personality, this personality has given her a cheery disposition even after she kills someone. Killing with a smile. It definitely sounds deranged. The main form of blood magic. The main form of blood magic. The main. The main form of blood magic. Her cheery disposition, even after she kills off the rails. The main form of blood magic. Her cheery disposition. The main form of blood magic. Her cheery disposition. Even the main form. Of, the main form of blood magic. Her cheery disposition. The main form. The stronger the abilities, as well as the stronger the personality of the target is, while Himiko is in their form. The downside to this is that. 
Over time, this has led to a bit of a lack of identity for Himiko, where traits from all of the personalities have started to seep into her own individualism. After leaving her clan, she hunted down members of other blood mage clans, stealing their spells and impersonating the disciples of these clans. It took a while, but over time, the clans became wise to this and put in methods to make sure an imposter couldn't just walk away with the spells. Himiko was able to steal the blood arts as the core basis for this type of magic was the same as her clans and the ancient form that she specialised in. It's where all modern day blood magic stems from. This gave her a large amount of skills to use and eventually Himiko found herself joining a dark guild, taking on impersonation and assassination jobs. Due to her unique magic, she excelled at her new tasks. The only flaw in Himiko's personality is a childlike demeanor when she faces a difficult situation, often making fun of her opponents in an attempt to distract them so she can escape or get a sample of blood to change her identity and mislead those who are after her. This childlike mentality also means that if she is infatuated with someone, she becomes obsessed to the point that she craves their blood to become as close to them as possible. Being a teenager, however, Himiko is able to attend the magical academies under the disguise of, well, her normal form, which is blonde hair, a standard teenager girl really, but behind the scenes she is still a dark mage, planning and influencing things for the dark guild that she is a part of, in order to bring down the justice within the society, and if possible turn the new hopeful magi towards the dark arts, recruiting them for the guild she's in. Although many are only used as pawns and they are completely expendable, those who have a rare or unique magical bloodline are taken to join the upper echelons of this guild, where they have a seal of loyalty cast upon them. This seal will activate if one betrays the three main rules of the guild and will cause the subject to die a painful and horrifying death. Although there are some who should be able to break this seal without setting it off, many are content with it as they have committed themselves to the full and evil path of darkness, casting their links to society and justice away, just as Himiko has done. A lesser known mage of the dark arts is Leviathan. Not much is known about his personality and beliefs, nor his true form. Like most of the mages working for a dark guild, his personality is a little bit off the rails in terms of his mental state and often Leviathan uses his favourite spell, Trigger, in order to enhance his strength and the power of his magical bloodline. Trigger is basically a form of amplifier for a mage's bloodline, but it does have the side effects of increasing one's violent tendencies, pushing one's mind to the limits and causing them to break out in a violent rampage. Despite this, he possesses an amazing level of control over his bloodline power, known as Hellasife. Unlike several other magical powers, this one is able to give incredible levels of durability and endurance. Combined with a muscular build, his physical strength is also increased to an insane level. Leviathan's bloodline magic allows him to turn his appendages on his fingers and head to control the length of them as well as be able to use them as a whip or even pierce through objects. Leviathan's bloodline also allows him to manipulate the elements around him, being able to take some control over the flow of water, controlling fire or other elements and manipulating them to ensnare or attack his foes. Perhaps the most terrifying aspect of this mage is his appearance. Other than being imposing with his larger build, his face and features look more like a deranged clown. A wide and large smile with a black set of lips, some frazzled black hair and yellow eyes. With looks that could haunt your nightmares, Leviathan fits in with the Dark Guild mentality and impression within the public. Due to his volatile nature, local mages of justice will not try to apprehend this Dark Mage if he is seen on the streets unless absolutely necessary. Instead, they are reported to the larger magical justice organisations who would send the mages who are able to handle such a powerhouse while containing the damage to the public. This is due to the volatile and mostly unpredictable nature of this mammoth of a person. Strangely enough though, Leviathan, when not under the influence of Trigger, is actually a gentle soul, has a smaller frame with a less intimidating demeanor. Even to the point where he seems friendly and children approach him and interact due to his clown-like features. It turns out Leviathan acts very much like his clownish appearance, often making kids laugh as he uses his quirk to create shapes and wonders for them to enjoy. It's not known if this is something that is true to his real nature or it is an act allowing him to remain hidden in the public eye. Either way, 
It's the much larger counterpart that is wanted by the mages of justice. Within the Dark Guild, Leviathan is a member of the upper echelons, although not as high up as Twice and Himiko. He is a pawn that the leader of the guild is very cautious about losing, as this powerhouse, even though it will not hinder his plans, Leviathan has proven himself to be useful and one who can hold his own against some of the top justice mages. Three villains from My Hero Academia as mages. Hope you enjoyed how this video turned out. It's really good fun doing this series again. And I have to say, despite how the villains turn out, my favourite one has to be twice. I can kind of feel the emotion from that piece. I think I've captured the kind of fall into madness of his personality, which is quite fun. Let me know if you want to see more in this series or what else you want to see My Hero Academia characters as in the comments below. Monday's video is going to be a live stream, so stop on by, say hi, and see what we're going to draw together. Anyway, stay safe, everybody. I'll catch you next time.